when I first saw this, I honestly just thought there's a Tesla driving to the customer's house from the factory. That should not be a difficult thing in 2025, in my opinion. A bit weird, but it just completely viable and, and okay. Especially for a PR stunt, you know, they can make that thing happen, no problem. Things aren't always as they seem though. Interestingly, when you do some digging, there are some telling things at play. So is this just a well-rehearsed PR trick or did they actually genuinely do what they say that they did? So by the end of this video, we will hopefully all have a better understanding of what is real autonomy and what is not. I'm neither saying this is real or not. I'm not saying they pretended or faked it or anything like that. That's not the point of this video. What I'm saying is, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I know almost all YouTubers are for or against Tesla or Elon, I know, but I'm actually on the fence. I don't really mind them at all. To be on one side is fashionable, I guess. I've got no interest in playing those sort of games and in, you know, and that's the point of my channel. So Teslas now make pretty reliable cars. They used to break pre-2019. Pre they used to have issues with handles and overheating screens. That, you can't dispute that, that's just true. Elon is polarizing. So that's done, I've said it, let's move on. So what we can see is that it appears that Tesla has actually rehearsed this route 10 or 15 times in the uh, weeks beforehand, before recording this video, with a driver as a passenger in the spare seat. They also had two vehicles following the car. One of them was a camera vehicle with four people in it, seemingly ready to stop it if there were anything weird going to happen or anything like that. Electrek points out that Waymo has also offered fully autonomous rides without drivers to paying customers in Phoenix and now parts of California making Tesla's claim not a first, even though they've said it's a first and it also wasn't fully autonomous. So the article notes Musk has a habit of stretching, to quote, stretching the meaning of terms such as fully autonomous. And this might be another case of that. It seems like it to me. This may have been more of a carefully managed stunt than a spontaneous milestone. So let's film it, chuck it on our YouTube channel, give it a nice title that catches people's attention. They will talk about it, especially with the video, without video evidence as well. Uh, and considering Tesla's past use of uh, Tesla employees in the passenger seat, even during quote, autonomous drives. The SAE levels of driving automation are an official framework from the Society of Automotive Engineers. So SAE International is the full name. The SAE levels of driving automation are an official framework from the Society of Automotive Engineers that define how much of the driving task a car or system is responsible for. And it ranges from zero to five. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Tesla is most likely a two. To start with, level zero is you are driving. The system might assist you slightly, like with warnings or emergency braking, things like that, but it doesn't actually drive anywhere. Examples, lane departure warnings, blind spot alerts, manual cruise control. Number one, driving assistance or driver assistance it's called you're in control but the car can assist you with either steering or acceleration or braking for example adaptive cruise control or lane keep assist number two partial automation this is probably where Tesla was at, right? So the car can handle steering and speed at the same time but you must supervise constantly and keep hands near the wheel for example Tesla autopilot Ford Blue, Cru Blue Cruise hands-free in some zones, GM Super Cruise. So level three, conditional automation. The car can drive itself in certain situations like on motorways or highways as you call it in the US and you can take your hands off, maybe even your eyes off the road, but you must be ready to take over when the system asks. Examples, Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot, currently legal in parts of Germany and Nevada, Level four, high automation. The car doesn't need you in specific environments like cities or fixed routes, and you can even fall asleep, but it won't operate outside those areas. It's called geofenced zones. Examples, Waymo and cruise control, uh, sorry, cruise robo taxis in Phoenix and San Francisco. Level five, this is apparently, if you ask Tesla what they can do, full automation. The car can drive anywhere at any time in any conditions, with no human input or steering wheel at all. No one has achieved this yet. Tesla really use level two automation, much less than full automation. I, I don't really have a very strong opinion on, on whether or not we should want autonomy, uh, but I'm fairly sure it's coming. 
But what do you all think? Do you all want it? And are you in, do you want that as, as a part of the future? And a really interesting question, would you currently go in a full autonomous car right now in 2025? For example, North LA, South LA, very hectic drive, quite a long, busy drive all the way through the city. Would you do it? Yes or no? Put it in the comments. Hello, folks. My name is Ben Alexander. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate you stopping by and tuning in. This is my channel, and I talk about the electric news from around the world for electric vehicles. Uh, thank you very much to all of the YouTube members, the Patreons, uh, even on the free tier. It doesn't really matter if you choose to pay or not. Some people can't afford it, but they still want to have deep dive videos and live streams and that sort of thing. Without you, it is not really possible to put this much time into my videos. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. If we are to have electric cars driving us around in the future, then we really need them to be as reliable as we can be, right? They need to be as reliable as the tide, so to speak. So we can't have them driving into concrete pillars. There are fairly recent videos still halfway through 2025 of Tesla's doing silly things on autopilot, veering off the road, hitting things. That's not something that we can shove under a mat. Although I don't think we should be anecdotal because a million journeys could be done a day and nothing happens for a month. But one thing happens and everybody talks about it as if it's terrible. It's clearly not terrible. Let's let's be honest about that. It's not terrible. Uh, not from my experience, really, really good. We should look at the data though and assess uh, what the net gain is for us as a whole uh, in society, even if we want to, even if we don't want to. Because, you know, ethically speaking, we, they, they are a two-ton piece of material with a battery on it, on wheels, going down the road at speed. I'm sure we could get them uh, to probably be good enough within 10 years. Uh, I just don't think they're there now, in my honest opinion. When it comes to autonomy, I think we need far more legal clarity, not just public understanding for public understanding, but uh, because of the serious implications involved. If an autonomous system fails and causes a fatal accident, we can't allow major companies like this to hide behind cleverly worded disclaimers or vague definitions or these you know, little kind of loophole. The loophole culture puts lives at risk, in my opinion. Even if some will try to dodge responsibility, we, we as a society kind of need to uh, get sharper about this. We need the laws and the language to catch up so that when something does go wrong, we know exactly who's accountable. This is a very interesting point. It's also worth comparing Tesla's approach to uh, the others basically in the same field. So Waymo, for example, doesn't even try to sell autonomy to private customers. They focus purely on geo-fenced robo-taxi services. Mercedes, on the other hand, took the regulatory route. Their level three drive pilot system is legal in Germany and Nevada, but only in very controlled conditions. A very clever idea, you know, and when it's active, Mercedes also publicly avows they accept legal responsibility. Tesla has gone the opposite, in the opposite direction, the antithesis, really. They push software to all their customers, keep drivers responsible and let the legal system sort it out later. And uh, that is very bold. And it's a, I think it's a very bad thing. So is this the best path? That is my question to you. Is it the best path? please consider putting it in the comments below. Yes or no, what do you think? That's still up for the debate. That's still up for debate. So especially when safety and trust are on the line, as it is right now, there has not been much scrutiny over the wording of the document behind the autopilot system, I don't think, for Tesla. I'm not here to say Tesla was evil or anything like that, and that autonomy is doomed. It's just not. It's definitely coming. It is brilliant. I can see a lot of place for that in society. But I am here to say that we need clarity, especially in the legal documents. We need honesty as well in marketing. Uh, and we need safety to be the priority, not profits. Things should not be optimized for profits. It should be safety and then profits, maybe. Not PR headlines either. Either. I'd love to hear what you think. Please do consider spending a few seconds and telling me in the comments. Do you trust Tesla on uh, to lead the way on autonomy? Do you trust them? Trust being the operative word here. Would you actually take your hands off the wheel every day for the next month, back and forth every day, wherever you go on every journey? Would you do that and close your eyes? Let me know in the comments. If you've had any experiences with full self-driving or autopilot or anything like that, good or bad, especially good or especially bad, anything that surprised you, please also let us know in the comments. 
I'm usually like the fourth or fifth person to see the comments. Usually a whole bunch of people are liking things and commenting before I've had the opportunity. So, uh, you know, just know that when you do put a comment, it's kind of going to everybody, not just to me. I think some people write me a message in the comments, but actually hundreds of thousands of people will see the comments. So thank you for watching. Appreciate your time. Consider subscribing if you liked the video. Consider unsubscribing if you didn't like the video. Works both ways. I appreciate it anyway. And uh, yeah, thanks for the time.